In the previous video, we had a look behind the hangar doors of the Sling Factory here in South Africa. After seeing the incredible line of airplanes and witnessing their meticulous craftsmanship, I even had the chance to fly the Sling TSI with the company's very own test pilot, Sean. So I'm getting into the low wing and flying with Sean, and we'll be doing some formation flying with the prototype high wing, which is gonna be super cool. <laughs> yeah, hi, links. So I'm gonna just do the takeoff, I'll talk through it, and then we can come back and do this demo, then it's less rushed. Yeah, sounds because good. This James guy, as you can see, he's like, He's like that Energizer bunny. I don't know if you've yeah. ever seen that advert. Uh -huh. Million You're one, so million two, <laughs> million three. One, two, three, four. It's very simple to operate because it's got quite a positive steering, the airplane, because it's directly coupled to the steering wheel. However, it doesn't need, a lot of people say they want tw toe brakes. This airplane has no problem with the, with its turning circle. Oh, wow. It'll turn in under six meters. That's incredible. This is like tail dragger stuff. Yeah. So there's no benefit to having the toe brakes on you. Propeller is very straightforward to use. You've simply got full fuel, Shorty. So if you find close formation, it'll piss on to you. That's nice. That sounds like fun. We've got a takeoff, climb, and a cruise setting. It well, all works. Uh, from sling ground. Yeah. What do you want? This is uh, the air component. 5,700 RPM. 5,400. Um, 5,000 RPM. Like this is so easy. I just want to just uh, do the run up size correctly, so I can show this lady. So everything is done through the FADAC. It's completely self-diagnosing. Yep. I'll even do some run-ups. Something I haven't done for a hell of a long time. Can you remember how? So we go up to 4,000 RPM. On. And we simply switch the switch off and switch it back on. And this and is lane B for the FADAC too? Yeah. Okay. So we always shut down the bigger generator first. And as long as the light goes off, we're good to go. Off and then on. With no more than a one second delay. And the reason for that is because if you actually waited too long, this never actually kills a set of plugs because it's monitoring it through resistance. So if you turned it off, firstly, what happens is the RPM actually goes up. Yeah. Secondly, it starts shutting down certain parts of the fader, so we just don't wait. At this point, I'd like to do the auxiliary pump test. I'd put that on, or main pump off, pressure's still good. Check the proper, put it in manual, we go course, we can audibly hear the proper adjust, back to fine. And it's a CSU, so I want to make sure that it's working, but if I went to auto, nothing would happen now. So I give it something to work with, and I say, okay, bring it back to 4,000. And it's done that all by itself. And as a bonus, we've been running on the auxiliary fuel pump, so we know that that's working 100%. We yeah. check the idle. Remember, these aeroplane engines can't be shock-cooled, so you could pull back the, th the power at 25,000 feet, dive straight towards the ground. You could primarily cool by water and oil. Fantastic. Uh, it's really comfortable, uh, uh, right eh? Super comfortable. Into uh, Charlie Whiskey, this is a Tango Sur India and Sea Hotel Whiskey. We lined up ready for immediate of 2 9. We're going to go route out towards the north, towards the so which we'll climb initially 6,123. Being turbocharged, variable pitch, just incidentally, there's the nose down trim, and there's yep. the nose up trim, the PTT's in the front here. Cool. If you can find, you can actually just fly it with two fingers, and wait for his wake to pass. Yeah. A turbocharged engine, variable pitch, no delay on the power, just like a jet. Open it up, let the propeller, and the engine settle down as quickly as possible, which they yeah. do. And now, like a horse. 55 knots, we're going to look around 55 knots, take it onto the back wheels. Yeah. And we'll just fly off. We look for 74 and positive climb. And it closes the screen so you can see the rate of climb here. There's the VSI over there. What? It's, it's shooting up. It's not a thousand now. Yeah, and the density altitude is really 6,000. We're at 1,100 feet a minute. Yeah. Full fuel. And this Garmin screen is, is stunning. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Eh? Yeah. Nice. How's it? Can you guys keep up with us? Uh, you know, that thing's only two knots slower than this, so it's going to take me a while to catch you, so I would slow down if I was you. Sorry, I'll be back on the front here. And what's the stall speed on this thing? Um, in the clean configuration, at gross, around 54 knots. Very benign. I'll demonstrate that to you. Uh, with a full flap, it'll stall at about 51 at gross. And how has it been, because you are the main uh, test pilot on the high wing. Yes, yes. How is it, uh, how does it... Compare. Compare with that? Oh, okay, so that one's got the same stall. It's like exactly the same wing. Yeah. Um, although I find that the stall on that aircraft is slightly more benign. In other words, it gives you less feedback. Yeah, we'll still get an airframe shutter and before she actually breaks away. Whereas that aircraft is in such a way, it's just so stable, it doesn't actually do much. You can stall it and it just mashes yeah. down like this. As you can see, I'm flying this aircraft feet off. No rudder needed whatsoever. It's so stable. You can, s you can see that ball just stays in the middle of the air over as well. Yeah. Even if we did a steep turn, initially the ball goes out, as you can see, the ball comes back all by itself, no rudder input needed. Does it have a rudder trim? No. Nope. It just is that stable? Yeah. 
What speed are you doing? Ground speed 93. Just speed up, otherwise I'm going to overtake you. Cool. Come past, wheel for right on you a bit. On your right wing. Wheel for right on you again. Cool, I'm going past. Me. I mean, this airplane, I mean, you'll feel it now when you fly it. I mean, even with a, the, the three, four people in the back with luggage, it's not, it's pitch stable. And I'll demonstrate that once we finish this with this photo shoot. And it's very cool that we get to see while they're testing with all the little um, tassels. tassels on it. And what was the endurance on this thing? Cause you've eight got hours. Eight hours. Oh, we're excluding the... We're going to find above this layer of cloud, you think it'll be able to space? I think it'll be fine, should we go through? Go through. With the longer range tanks? Um, it gives them extra three hours. We'll have about 11 or 12 hours endurance. So how did you become the test pilot? For oh, so I've been flying since I was nine years old. <laughs> I got my glider pilot's license at 14. No way. And, uh, you know, I, I tried many th avenues, including the, the commercial route. But, you know, I love working on airplanes as much as I enjoy flying them. And, um, you know, in the commercial environment, that's all you ever do is just fly them. So I really wanted to, to, to pursue them. I got involved, I was a commercial helicopter pilot and, uh, I had nothing to do in the summer months. So I ended up joining these guys, helping them out with their production vault. Did you say commercial helicopter pilot? Or yes, yeah. yes. I flew commercial, but you know, unfortunately, you probably know yourself, the work for a helicopter is quite limited in the sense that it's mainly done during now winter. So I had very little work to do during the summer. Okay, I'm going to turn to the right a bit, Jim. Actually, these will make stunning shots, though. Yeah. Oh, lovely. We'll come and get to you again. Okay, coming up on your right. Now you do maintenance and flying. Yeah, and I'm also an, an engineer, so I sign out all these aircraft after new. Yeah, so I did the final inspections, the final test flying. I get to do everything that I enjoy. And it must be fantastic having your daughter now flying as well, right? Yeah, yeah, she's uh, she's building her own aircraft. Um, yeah, so I'm very proud of her. You know. She's what is she building? She's building a okay, yeah. So say again. Position good, yeah. Fantastic. Beautiful. They say beautiful. Cool man, he's flying. So I'm driving at the moment. Wow, you're surprised because I can actually keep it level. <laughs> yeah, I thought that can't be you. We'll do a pull away for a bit of a fun and come back, okay? Cool. Three, two, one. Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really cruising along at 133 knots at the moment. A burning 22 litres an hour. Um, the engine goes into an eco mode at 80% of its actual power. I'm going to demonstrate so that. I'm used to flying a high wing, then I need to kind of get used to the position of the wing <laughs> for my looking at you know? Also, the, the, just the attitude of the aircraft is different. You're welcome to fly for a bit. <laughs> and how does it perform with the uh, forward CFG? I was flying really well, actually. I'm amazed. Uh, I want to, like, I'll need to stall it and so on to get a good feeling, but I think it's fine. We're quite high, should we still together? Yeah, let's do it together. I'll try a little further. Coming back on the throttle. We'll just maintain our launch when you stay away from us. Woo! Double! <laughs> I'm against the stop and it actually won't really break. Yeah, we broke it about 56. Hey, you've got full yep. control, so you can My control? Yeah. So you can. Yeah, I'm turning around to the right. And as you said, just very little uh, no, right rudder. Off. Absolutely not. Take, take a feed right off for okay. the initial leave. The Bambi. Yes. <laughs> Enjoying that. How's that airplane? This plane is fantastic. So stable, flies so smoothly. It's awesome. Nice, eh? Actually, we can be sent below the cloud now. Okay. We're going to go below now, eh? Can I just do a turn to the left and just yeah. see what... Let's go to the right, there's the uh, general flying area over there, right. so turn okay. right a little bit. And he's out of our place, our eh? he's away from us, right? Yeah, he's behind us, it's fine. I'm just going to do a turn to the right here. Wait, wait, we're just tracking a thing, there's a stall or two. I need... Yeah, cool, we're doing a right hand turn quickly. Yeah. So interesting to not have to fly using rudder that much. Yeah. At, at all, even. Yeah. And this airplane just designed that way. So, feet like this. You could do a steep turn to the left. Yeah. yeah. Okay, off you go. You'll see initially the ball goes out and it comes back all by itself. It needs no rudder input. This is fantastic. Very little adverse aileron. If we bank it hard to the right now, you'll see the ball initially goes out, but the ball will come back all by itself. And how nimble it is. Yeah. How quickly it turns. Yeah. What's the roll rate on this thing? I feel like I can just take control quickly. Yeah, your control. So it rolls at about, uh, we've worked up between five and a half and six seconds in the roll. 
360 degrees. So down, go check it up about 45. Amazing! Back that direction. How was that roll? Typical! <laughs> well, they were clearing the roll rack, so I thought, you know, let's time it quickly. Yeah, um, we're at 11 o'clock now, so we passing down towards your 9. So just keep it at this altitude? Yep, to the middle of the house, perfect, it's fine. And that trim is phenomenal. Yeah, the electric trim is nice. So there's a couple of, if I could just take it for a yeah, minute Yeah, your control. Two. So, I always say that this parachute, this aircraft is not fitted with a parachute. The parachute system is really a, a little bit of a placebo. I mean, if you can look out here, there's so many places to actually land. We yeah. are blessed that way in this country. Look, eventually if you're above high ground at night without you know, lost engine and parachute, it's nice to have. But the modern day avionics have become so reliable. This GMC 507 autopilot controller is designed to stabilize the aircraft within five seconds. So if we were confused, disoriented, we press the blue button and five seconds later it'll level the, the aeroplane. Okay. From there onwards we can decide what we want to do. We can either fly it on a heading. So we let's just fly it out to the west. And we can tell it, as we at 6.5, we tell it to climb to 6,800. It won't do anything until you tell it how. So I'm going to tell it to do it by vertical speed, up at 300 feet per minute. Okay. Incredible. That said, it's even it gets more incredible. Depending on the situation, will be how aggressive the autopilot reacts. It will still level the aircraft. So if we were in intent into a spiral dive, for instance, and I, it, it'll react more aggressively to level the aircraft off. Yeah, just to reduce that time in which it is yeah. reacting. Yeah. Also, I mean, the autopilot designed in such a way that it will not stall the aircraft. Also, these uh, servos are magnetically coupled, so you can still have full control of the aircraft. Yeah. So it's not permanently locked in there, so there's no real chance of it. To disengage, you simply press that button. To re-engage, you hold it for two seconds, and the autopilot is re-engaged. <laughs> Technology is incredible. Yeah. So I'm also a firm believer that an aeroplane needs to have, have, to have two boxes, especially for me. It has to have form and functionality. If you take a Cirrus, a re the Cirrus really got a beautiful form, but in South Africa it's a little bit limited when it comes to functionality in the yeah. sense of short field, bush fields, and rough strips, that sort of thing. Anyway, as I was saying, this airplane, I believe, fills both markets, both form and functionality, and I'm going to demonstrate some of those things to you. I'm going to fly the circuit as fast as I can, okay? Flat out, full power, we're already at 166 knots. I'll only configure this airplane for landing on final approach. So the wind's not going to really help us because it's blowing crosswind from the north. Wind vector's also indicating 20 knots. Yeah. And we're at VNE already. Do all of them have the Garmin system or also the South African... Uh... MGL. Yeah. We used to supply the MGL no longer. The customer has a choice. In yeah. the last five, six years, nobody has opted to go back to the MGL. So it's just isn't so far superior league. Yeah. Turfield, uh, Tang, just here, India, Anton North AIM, 225 Heavy, right diamond and make two knots. I wonder if anybody heard that. Okay, so I've got no radar input here. I'm 160 <laughs> knots on the diamond. <laughs> this is incredible. How stable it is in this turn. No, no feet whatsoever. No, no. So we're doing base at 154 knots. Yeah, okay. Turning finals now at 155 knots. Still no rudder input. Coming up on V3 flaps one, two, three, and we are ready to land. That's how that speed just got pulled out so quickly is incredible as well. We're already at 80 knots now. Okay, keep talking because we've got a slight crosswind. So for 155 knot approach. Uh, I'm going to backtrack quickly. Okay, we are in low level 5. <laughs> <laughs> this is a sight you won't see often. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> I like how you ducked. Okay, that was cockla. Even I ducked her. You're even in between the wheels. Okay, so we've got a density altitude 6,600 feet. We have, we can't count the wind. This line over here is 150 meters from that fence. I'll have this aeroplane with three people, almost full fuel airborne on that line, as a short field takeoff example.
Incredible. Six and a half thousand feet density altitude. Wind is not going to help us. Nope. What's it like on sea level? No, it's incredible. I can get it in 80 meters, 90 meters. 90 meters. We can't use full length because we've got a, a fence here, so we have oh, to here assume that we've only got 100 and, 100 and something meters. 100. Yeah. All right, and here we go. 141 horsepower. I've got a slightly different technique for short field. I keep everything zeros for less drag. Yep. Wind it up here. And release, let it run. Right. Flaps one, two, and let's go fly. Airborne 140 meters. Fantastic. <laughs> Off your left wing, okay. Yeah, it's hard to believe, eh? And with the three of us, and you said there was a full fuel, right? That's full fuel. Start doing a gentle turn to the right so we can line up uh, to the east of the field, eh? Cool. Or do you want to go in 1-1? One, one? Uh, okay, let's go in 1-1. One, one. We're on your left wing. Okay, helicopter traffic four dams. So, this is fully IF equipped. Are they allowed to do IF training on this aircraft in South Africa, or is it...? Uh, you're allowed to do IF training. That's about where it ends. You will not get. I won't. We are busy with IF certification. All the aircraft that leave our factory are IF approved for the states. And, but uh, we're busy with our current CO. You need to break different ways or the same way. Let's go different ways. I'll go left. You go right. Huh? Okay. Well, you count it. Cool. Too low because it actually looks better, slightly higher. I think. Mean, I can tell to you. And three, two, one, break. Right. Woohoo! <laughs> That looks so cool. <laughs> uh, no, it was all good, eh? Woo! <laughs> uh, yes, uh, it was all good. I mean, the range that this aircraft offers is incredible. So you can wake up in the morning on a Sunday morning with this aircraft and close your eyes, put it down on a map of South Africa, not worry about fuel, not worry about the kind of landing area, and just yeah, go. Good. That's incredible. Yeah. I don't actually know of any other piston aircraft that could actually beat this aircraft to a place like over a thousand nautical miles because of its endurance. Yeah. Thank you, Shandy. Right down into right, now. And there. straighten over here, yeah. and then just pull the throttle back. Yeah. Back to idle. Just watch your D set. Sean, are you going to land now? Yeah. Nose up a bit more. It's a very big propeller, so it catches the power quite quickly. That's why you've got to come back so aggressively on the power. Otherwise, you'll just carry on pulling the aero panel. Even when you come to land, it's a good idea to pull the power right back, because even if it's got it slightly on, it'll just carry on dragging you down. Yeah. Now, as you're turning base, you can take flaps two. Yeah. And then t just remember to trim. Yeah. Turn field, tank is here, just turn right base, so we're making on. But yeah, we want about 75. Okay, cool. Up a little. And then final approach, I always say you want to be about 70, 75. In this configuration, always, it's better to have a little bit more speed, especially when you've got passengers in the back. It's a horrible thing trying to find speed when you don't have it. Yeah. So I would approach it between 70 and 75. Keeping it at 75. You can dump full flaps now. Yeah. Slow down. Bring that power yeah. back a little bring bit. Bring it back. I'm going to put in a bit of feet here. About 70. I'm going to use those feet for that. The cross rip. I don't want to get too slow with this aeroplane over there. There we go, perfect. Once you cross over here, you can bring it back to idle. And you know how it works. A million bucks if you glide it to the end of the runway. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Very nice. Woo! Good. Stick neutral. Oh yeah, cool. And you can apply the brakes first. Let's pull it there. They can pull it quite hard. They're tiny little brake pads like this. I always say pull them, let them get it heat up, and then let them cool down. Otherwise, you just overheat them. Oh, it's beautiful. But it's a very easy aeroplane. Fantastic. I can generally do conversions on this aeroplane to a 100-hour pilot in about 20 minutes. You know, Incredible. All we go do is use upper air work just to get the speeds right. And then you can't land in an aeroplane if you can't get the speeds right. Landing is it's easy if you get the speeds right. Where are we taking it? We're going to turn left here. Yeah. Drive through those people because I don't like any of them. Have we got lights here that I can... Do you want to stand <laughs> in the middle of an highway talking sh**? <laughs> Just put the park brake on. Yeah. Now we've shut down the switches, we don't need that. All of those can go off. EFAS 2. Avionics.
Okay. We turn the record the hubs. If is if is to one both now. If is one and backup. Yeah, and then master the key to the center. The key does nothing. Awesome! Thank you so much for this. This was the coolest demo of the plane. <laughs> a cool first flight in a sling. Wow! We really loved it. Yeah, and it's so simple to fly. I mean, I was, you know, I love demonstrating the airplane because, you know, also firstly being a test pilot, it's, it's largely a responsibility and not a privilege at all, you know, yeah. and I regard it that way. And uh, I love demonstrating these airplanes. I just feel that it, you know, it's such a safe product and, you know, it just, it's, it's just a fantastic machine. You know? I mean, my wow. daughter's going to fly her one around the world when she turns 21. And so I actually don't have a problem with that, you know. No. I go like, okay, the worst she's going to need is a credit card and goodbye. So her and her <laughs> mates are planning to go take a year off. And go and fly around the world. Why not? Thank oh, God there was one not cock pilot. In this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel much safer. Actually, I was a yacht. She was fine rather.